Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. To this video, you can write down as well as understand quickly the notes of class 8th history lesson 3 ruling the countryside. And the book is R Pass 3 and the it is an NCERT book. So let us begin with important points. These are some of the important points which, is, which are often asked as one markers in the exams. And this eighth one, the Champaran movement was against indigo planters. This is very important. These indigo planters were basically the British who were forcing Indians to grow indigo. And these Rayot, Mahal, Nich, these are also important terms. Let us begin with question number one. Describe the main features of permanent settlement. What were the problems associated with this system? So permanent settlement system, it was a land revenue system which was introduced in 1793 by the East India Company. And under this system, Rajas and Talukdars, they were recognized as Zamindars and people who worked on their land, they paid revenues to Rajas and Talukdars. And these in turn paid it to the company. That means East India Company. And whatever amount was paid to the East India Company, it was fixed permanently. So what were the problems associated with this system? So there were certain problems. First of all, the revenue had been fixed. The revenue here means taxes. These were fixed and they were so high that Zamindas found it difficult to pay. Secondly, those who failed to pay, they lost their zamindari rights. That means now they could not collect revenue from that land, from the people who were working on that land. Then later on, what happened? Prices rose, prices of crops rose and the income of zamindars increased. But the company, East India Company, could not get any benefit from it because the revenue was already fixed. So these were some of the problems. Let's move to the question number two. How was Mahalwari system different from permanent settlement system? Under Mahal, first of all, Mahalwari system was started by Holt McKenzie in 1822, and here it was the permanent settlement was brought by Corn, Lord Cornwallis in 1793. Under the Mahalwari system, revenue was to be revised and permanent, as the word permanent suggests, revenue was fixed, period, uh, fixed permanently. And here under Mahalwari, the charge to collect the revenue was on village headmen. And here the under permanent, the charge to collect the revenue was on village zamindars. The zamindars could be the Raja or the Talukdars. Talukdars had many villages under them. Now the third question, give two problems which arose with the Munro system of fixing revenue. So the new Munro system posed two problems. The revenue was too high for peasants to pay. Peasants were not able to pay such a high revenue. So they left the villages and the villages were deserted. That means they became all alone. Then fourth question, why were the Rayots reluctant to grow indigo? So Rayots were reluctant to grow indigo for various reasons. First of all, they were paid a very low price of for it. So and they were given a loan also for growing indigo. They were given a loan so that they could uh, buy all the raw materials that they needed for growing it. And this loan involved, this loan was basically, they were not able to repay in a, in properly. Then uh, the prices they were paid is very low. Again, they took the loan. So they were not able to come out of it because their income was not very high from this indigo cultivation. The final price paid to them was very low. And these riots were asked to grow indigo on fertile parts of their land on which they grew rice. So this is the problem. They were not willing to grow indigo, but they were forced to grow it because they were more earning more profits from cultivation of rice. Then what were the circumstances which led to the eventual collapse of indigo production in Bengal? So this happened because Rayots, they denied producing the indigo anymore because they were not paid a good price for it. And they started protests also, which was supported by the Zamindas as well. The Indigo Commission was constituted by government 
which allowed riots to refuse growing indigo indigo uh, riots could say no to it after this commission was formed no to planting indigo and eventually planters moved out of the city because when they were inside the city they were forced to grow it so they moved out what were the causes of champaran movement mahatma gandhi he came back to india from south africa in 1915 and then uh, later on he started champaran movement in 1917 against these indigo planters who were these indigo planters they were the british government so he inspired the peasants to struggle against this oppressive plantation system wherein they were forced to grow the crop and paid a very low price so this is it there are notes available on other chapters as well kindly share the video in case you like it and there's a video on the entire map work of class 8 as well which is there on my channel thank you so much for watching